Welcome back. We've got a Acura MDX, no idea what year. It runs, it drives, but it needs rear brakes. Uh, this vehicle actually got towed in for uh, blowing out brake line on the driver's side rear. So we have that brake line to repair. It desperately needs pads and rotors in the rear, so we're also gonna do the pads and rotors. And then they complained about a clunk uh, coming from the rear suspension. Uh, they have a broken sway bar link on that driver's side rear as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do both sway bar links. So let's get started. So the first thing I do on these brake jobs is once I pull the wheel off to go ahead and clean the surface, the mounting surface here. We get a ton of corrosion on these wheels. So we always make it a habit when we pull wheels off to clean up this corrosion. And then we put a coat of fluid film on here and that keeps that corrosion away so that we don't have to deal with this in the future. So one might wonder why we're putting pads on the back of this thing because there's so much pad life left. But the back surface of these rotors is all pitted out and rusted and there's only about maybe 30% of this surface back here that's making good smooth contact with these pads. You can see it even on the front side it's starting to creep in here. And what that is doing is just chewing up those pads. Recently somebody pad slapped this and uh, the brakes just are not functioning correctly that way. So we're gonna go ahead and get these swapped out for them, put new rotors on it, do the brake job the right way. I'd say 98% of the time, probably 99% of the time, we do pads and rotors together because of this exact problem. Even on a set of rotors where the pads are wore down and there's still good surface here, we always see rust that's creeping over these edges and you'll never get a full pad life out of these pads if you put them back on here. Might bring up is well, why don't you resurface? Well, the fact of the matter is that we then have to absorb liability instead of passing that liability on to the manufacturer of the rotors. When you start machining these down, even if it's in spec, it's still thinner than the OEM spec, therefore creating more risk of this rotor warping and you're now absorbing that liability. So as a shop, that's just not something we're willing to do, so. See this bubble here? We got air in this boot. We need to get that out. Otherwise, stand to risk, you know, pinching this this piston boot and cutting it. Take a little spoon tip, stick it under here. That's not good there. So you see this? We've got brake fluid leaking past our piston and filling up this boot. So this car needs to get some new calipers put on it. <clears throat> We're on the driver's side of the vehicle here. Um, we've got this brake tore apart. The brake line that's leaking is up here behind this uh, wheel liner. So we're gonna pull this wheel liner out and get to that brake line. There is our leaky little devil. So we're gonna come down here underneath this, between the fuel tank and the frame there and use a union and a couple of flare nuts and repair that. Ideally, we can get just enough heat up here to break this loose, but gripping it when it's 50% missing is kind of the struggle. So hence, some alligator pliers. We're gonna come in here and strip off some of this fucking garbage. Hopefully without slicing ourselves open. So we need 
3 16 inverted flare with a 10 by 1 thread, I believe. I think we're going to go ahead and use our standard 3 8 24 on our union section. We don't use compression fittings on brake lines, so it's just asking for trouble. We use flare, flare nut unions, and it's just how we do it. It's not the cheapest way, but it is the best way if you're not going to replace the line. So I have a whole bunch of brake line flaring tooling, but this has been my favorite by far, this little kit here. Um, when doing on vehicle stuff, I have the real expensive Master Cool set, I think it is, that's hydraulic. Um, but this one for tight quarters is the best, the best set I've found so far. It's super convenient. So this is the one we're gonna use here. First up, I'm gonna cut the line. Should give us about enough to work with there. These close quarters cutters are pretty fucking nice. These are the ones that came in the standard, I think, OTC set that I got. They're the ones I've stuck with because the ones that came in the Master Cool set are, they were trash. I threw them away. And I've thought about getting some rigid ones, but this one's been working for me really well. It's nice and small. So, before we forget, because I've forgotten way too many times, just like everybody else, we're going to go ahead and put this nut on here. Hopefully we still have enough room there, otherwise we'll have to trim back some more. Uh, we might go ahead anyway and trim back some more. For me, I had a piece of line here that was already um, flared on one end, so that'll make this job that much faster. We're just gonna cut this off here. No particular measurement at this point. I'm comfortable with our length. Um, I have enough to work with here as far as bending it and making adjustments, but I don't want to bend this too tight and then not have room for my tooling plus my flare nut. So we're going to go ahead and flare this um, probably right on here. Hopefully that works out fine. And then uh, we'll finish our final bend to get it into position after that. Find our 316th side. It's going to be working backwards on this one, or upside down on one or the other, or both. Thread that in lightly. Thread these down lightly. Get our line all the way in. See it through the sight hole. Go ahead and tighten down the bolts. Make sure we got our flare nut on there. one 
function one is what's going to bubble that in, bubble in the end of the brake line. Then function two is what wedges it in inside out. The other thing about this tool is it makes just incredibly good, good quality, um, you know, flares on the lines, and that's why I like it so much. Um, it's well centered, you know. There's there's a lot less room for error versus the normal or the old school vice style ones. Go to it stops, no need to you know really hammer her in there. We got this shaped up pretty good. So that we don't do any damage to our new line, we'll rotate it as far as it will back the other way, and then tighten them down again. It's for good reason because I've had power steering lines from other shops come in leaking because they weren't seated correctly. Get them good and snug. No need to strip anything out, but good and snug. Not rubbing on anything. Go ahead and tighten up our upper one. Same thing, tighten it down, back it off a bit. Tighten it down, good and snug. There we go. So once we, we have removed our hardware here, all this rust and crud has to come out. The best way to do this is with a sandblaster. We do not yet have a sandblaster, so we're gonna use a cut off wheel and just gently clean that off without removing any material.
Well, so much for closure on this video. Uh, as far as the Acura, uh, we've seen all the brake job stuff, and uh, the only thing we didn't see was the bleeding of the brakes and the tie rod or the um, rear sway bar links. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching, following along, seeing how we do brake jobs. Give the video a like and go ahead and subscribe if you guys enjoy watching these type of videos. And we're gonna keep this this train rolling. So appreciate it, guys.